welcome into lecture number eight on tangent planes and linear approximations. Let's start with some geometric setup as we did in the last lecture. And this is going to be closely related to the last lecture as you will see. So let me just write this down. Geometric setup or geometric motivation. For this lecture we want to continue to assume that we have a function f of two variables. So let's let f equal f of x, y be a function whose first derivatives are continuous. So whose first partial derivatives that we studied in the last lecture are continuous. Alright, so and we also want to consider the graph of this function. This is the main idea here that we want to consider the graph. So again, the partial, the first partial derivatives being continuous means that the graph is uh, pretty nice. It doesn't have any crazy things happening, it's definitely continuous because differentiable means continuous, right? And so here's z, the x, y, z planes, or coordinate uh, axes, sorry, and this surface is going to be the graph of our function f. And just like we did in the last lecture, we want to suppose that we have a point in our domain, a, b, and above that point there is going to sit a, another point, a point that lies on the surface, say this point here, We'll call this point P. I'll label it up here because we're going to add to this drawing. But this point's coordinates are going to be A, B, and then F of A, B. That's the Z coordinate, right? So back here somewhere behind this surface is the Z coordinate F of A, B. And so that's, in, that's where it intersects the surface, or the, the Z axis back there, the height of it. Okay, so this is the point that's on our surface. And in the last lecture we defined uh, uh, the partial derivatives. So the x partial derivative is the slope of the tangent line that lies in the plane that's parallel to the x z axis and crosses through the surface at this point, right? So maybe the the tangent line in the x direction looks like this, right? And this line tx that lives in this plane has the following properties. Number one, y is fixed, right? So we did this in the last lecture, but y is fixed. So y is equal to b and at the same time, right, the equation of this line in the plane, in the, in the plane that's parallel to the x-z coordinate axis is z equals the height of the point. It's just the equation of a line, right? So now we just pretend, once we said that y equals b, we can just pretend we're in the x-z plane. So it's going to be z equals f of a, b, that's the height in the z direction, plus the slope of this line times x minus a, right? Well, the slope of this line is how we defined the partial derivative. So df by dx at ab, that's the slope of the line, times x minus a. So that's the equation of the tangent line in the x direction. Now, in the y direction we have the same scenario, right? So this time maybe the line looks like this. And remember this one lives in a plane where x is fixed equal to a, and this plane is therefore parallel to the yz plane, um, which is the plane of the screen, right? The plane of the screen that you're watching this on. And this green line here lies in a plane that's parallel to that plane. So this is the tangent line uh, in the y direction at this point. So to the surface at this point. And again, the equation of this we can write down. So we know that x is fixed, it's equal to a. And the equation of this tangent line now in the yz plane, where z is the dependent variable, and y is the independent one, is going to look very similar to this, right? It's going to be z equals the height of the point, so again, f of a, b, plus the slope of the line, which is the partial derivative, this time in the y direction, df by dy, at a, b, and this time times y minus b, right? y minus b. All right? And so then we notice, all right, well, th these two lines lie in planes that intersect each other, and therefore those two lines themselves determine a plane, okay? And the plane that is determined by these lines is called the tangent plane to the surface. So this plane right here is supposed to be, it's supposed to share the point P and otherwise just be tangent to the surface. So depending on the geometry of the graph of the surface, you can think of this as just touching the surface at this point and then off in every direction, uh, the surface, the way that I've drawn it here, looks like it might curve away from the tangent plane. Um, it's possible that it could curve you know, up through and it can definitely cross the tangent plane later, like away, far away from this point, right? But the idea is that this plane is the best plane approximation of the surface near this point, okay? So this is the tangent plane. And again, this is what we want to define in this lecture. So this 
kind of baby blue colored plane that I've drawn here is the tangent plane to the surface. Again, the surface is determined by the function, right? So to the surface gamma of f, the graph of f, at the point p, whose coordinates are a, b, and then f of a, b, right? So this is a, a plane. The equation of a plane, we remember hopefully from calculus 2, can be written as a uh, combination of x, y, z, so it's usually ax plus by plus cz plus d equals zero, but the uh, the a, b, and c in, the, in that case are constants, right? So the point is that this is, and the d is a, is a constant that depends on, on the location of the plane where the, the point p. But the point is that that is not the only equation of a plane, right? And so it turns out that the equation of this plane has to include the equation of the blue tangent line and the equation of the green tangent line at the same time, right? And so we match up these two equations that we've written down, and somehow they have to give us the equation of the plane. So here's the equation of the plane. The equation of the tangent plane. to the surface, gamma of f, at this point p. Again, a, b, f of a, b, is given by. And remember, we assume that our, that our uh, partial derivatives were continuous for this, but uh, and now that we're only using them as a single point on the surface. They, they don't play a role in the equation of the tangent plane, except for their value at this point. Uh, p, because that, that's the slope of the lines at the point p, right? It's given by the following. So it's given by z equals f of a, b. That's the height, right? Uh, plus the partial derivative in the x direction. It's got to have both of these, right? And so again, if we compare these equations, this one has y minus b, x is fixed equal to a. Look at this one. This one has x minus a, and then y is fixed equal to b. So if y is equal to b, this term would be zeroed out, right? And if x is equal to a on this one, the x minus a term would be zeroed out. So really, the plane just has to have both of these together. So it's going to be f of ab uh, plus df by dx at ab times x minus a plus df by dy at ab times y minus b. All right, so this looks just like the equation of a tangent line. If you were to cover up, say cover up one of these, um, but then it's extended to two-dimensional domains. So this is the equation of the tangent plane to the function at the point. Okay, so um, that's our definition and then a little geometric setup so we can see exactly what we're working with. And we'll look more at this geometrically in a few minutes, but first let's compute an example. So here is a function z equals, so here I'm writing z equals instead of f equals, but z equals e to the x minus y, and I want to find the equation of the tangent plane. So I'll find an equation of the tangent plane to this surface at the point 2, 2, 1. So you can verify that 2, 2, 1, when x and y are both 2, z is equal to 1. You can verify that by just plugging in. So I'll let you do that on your own. But take a minute to try to work this out. You've got the equation right here. So try to write down um, the equation of the tangent plane using this equation right here. And I'll check back with you guys in a minute. <music> Let's see how you guys did. The first thing that we need to do if we're going to use this equation is we need to compute uh, these derivatives, right, these partial derivatives, and then evaluate them at the point. So the point of our domain, our point P, is 2, 2, 1. And of course, we can verify our function f of x, y is equal to, in this case, we called it z. But this is a function because it's got an equation, right? It's equal to e to the x minus y. And we can definitely verify that f of 2, 2 is equal to e to the 2 minus 2. Well, that's just e to the 0. So that is 1. So this point does lie on the, on the surface. If the point doesn't lie on the surface, then you're not going to be able to find an equation of a tangent plane there because there is no, you know, it's not on the surface, right? So the, the, equation, the point sorry, has to be on the surface before we can find an equation of the tangent line. But notice that at this point, we've already computed now the f of a, b. So f of 2, 2 
equals 1. That's part of our equation. We need that, right? That's part of our equation. And then we just have to compute the rest. So we know uh, just from this whole setup that A is equal to 2 and B is also equal to 2 from up here. So now we have to compute our derivatives, right? So we're going to take the derivative. I'll write it as dz by dx. Again, because we're given our function as z equals something. But the derivative of z with respect to x is going to be, so e to the xy, e to the x minus y, and then by the chain rule we multiply by the x derivative of the exponent, which is just going to be 1. So that's it. It's itself, right? Similarly, dz by dy, the y derivative of this function is going to be itself, e to the x minus y, but then the chain rule says take the y derivative of the exponent, and that's going to give us a minus 1 or a minus sign. So this will be negative e to the negative x, negative e to the x minus y for the y derivative. And then we just have to plug these in, right? So our slopes are going to be evaluated at the point 2, 2 from the domain of our function. So dz by dx at the point 2, 2. In this case, it's e to the 0, which is positive 1. And dz by dy at the point 2, 2, that's negative e to the 0. So that's negative 1. So those are our slopes. And then at this point, we just put it all together, right? So z is equal to f of 2, 2. I'm going to write out the whole formula here. Plus df, I'll write it as, you can interchange the f and the z because they really are playing the same role here, right? So df by dx at 2, 2 times x minus 2 plus df by dy at 2, 2 times y minus 2. Okay, and then again, f of 2, 2 is 1, right? So this now we plug in. We get 1 plus x derivative is positive 1 times x minus 2, plus y derivative is negative 1 times y minus 2. All right, and so then we can kind of uh, simplify. This is, this is correct, and you could stop here. There's nothing wrong with this, right? But we can kind of simplify this. So z is going to be equal to uh, 1 plus x minus y minus 2 plus 2. So the minus 2 minus negative 2, those cancel. And we're left with just 1 plus x minus y. So either one of these is fine. Okay, either one is fine. If you want to keep the visual uh, of the point, uh, uh, the point P in the domain, right, or at least the domain, the point uh, 2, 2, you can leave it like this, and it's no problem, right? So this one helps you actually visualize where the tangent plane meets the surface. It's where the, it's above the point 2, 2 in the domain. This one, though, is just a simpler equation of the tangent plane. You could even write this. You could even simplify this further, right, and write this as x minus y minus z plus 1 equals 0. And this is kind of the, the way that we define the equation of a plane in Calc 2. Ax plus by plus cz plus d equals 0. Okay? All right, well, let's now take another look at our plane. I'm going to redraw the picture. And we'll take another closer look at this. So I'm going to redraw the picture with kind of less of the bells and whistles here. All right, so here's our surface, gamma of f. Grab the same assumptions, right? So our function is uh, has first derivatives and they are continuous at the point that we care about. So here's the point on the surface. We'll say this is the point. So this is the point p, which is a, b, f of a, b. All right, now I am going to sketch a tiny little blob of the domain down below. All right, because it is going to end up being important to the discussion that we're going to have in a moment. So there's our point in the domain. This, this is the point A, B. Okay, now we have our tangent plane. I'm going to just draw like this little portion of this tangent plane. And this is the tangent plane to the surface. So sometimes instead of this gamma of f, we just call the surface S for surface. And that's the graph itself right there, right? So the tangent plane, if we want to uh, refer to this tangent plane in symbols, we can call this the tangent plane at P to S. So T, P, S. The tangent plane at P, at the point P, to S, to the surface S. So tangent plane to P at S. All right, the idea now is that we want to think about the following idea. So as um, the surface curves, we talked about, I talked about this a little bit just a few minutes ago in the setup, but as the surface curves, um, we can approximate our, the height of our surface by the height of our tangent plane. Because notice 
just with this last example, we had a function which is an exponential. It's a pretty simple one, but you can imagine a more complicated exponential function versus this very simple equation of a plane, right? Z equals 1 plus x minus y. This is much easier to compute, and you could compute it in your head if the numbers were different than 2 minus 2, right? Um, you could compute this, you know, even if you didn't do it in your head, you can compute this linear equation much simpler than this exponential one. So that's the main idea here. So we want to regard in this example now, moving, you know, in this this item, I should say, we want to regard the tangent plane as a function. So that's going to be what we do now. We're going to regard the tangent plane as a function on the same domain. So as a function, really on a, as a function uh, near the point A, B in the domain of the of the surface, right? And so I'm going to zoom in just a little bit on this, but here's the idea once again. Let's say on our surface we've got the curve, this is curving, right? And so the tangent plane is flat, straight, right? Same deal. The surface is curving in the other direction as well, and really in every direction probably. And the tangent plane is again straight or flat. And so what we can do is we can think about, we let's suppose that we're going to move around down below here. So let's say we're going to move over to, say, this point. All right? And so this point here is near the point AB in the domain, but it's not exactly equal to it, right? So how can we measure where it is? Well, we can measure the change in both directions. So this point right here is let's say delta x units in the x direction away from a b and then it's delta y units away in this direction so tiny changes right tiny changes delta x and delta y and so the coordinates of this point can be thought of as a plus a tiny change delta x and b plus a tiny change delta y and then what we do is we go up and we want to approximate pretend this is going straight up we want to approximate the height of the surface above this point. Well, the actual height of the surface is going to be the height of this point, right? But what we're going to do is we're going to approximate it by the height of this point up here, the height of this point. So this point right here, um, its height is going to be approximately the same as this height. Okay, so this height right here, this magenta color, the height of this is exactly f of a plus delta x and then, yeah, I need more room to write it, so I'm going to write a very curvy arrow here. But this is, the height of this point is going to be um, f of a plus delta x, b plus delta y. Meanwhile, the height at this point is going to be our tangent plane, right? The height of our tangent plane. So let's plug in, uh, we can regard this as a function, right? a plus delta x b plus delta y. All right, and we can call this z with a squiggle, and this one is actually z. All right, and so the idea is as long as we're close to our point in the domain, to the point a, b, then these two should be approximately the same. All right, so that's the idea. And then we'll write down exactly how to do this in just a moment. But the idea here is that if delta x and delta y are small. So those are small deviations from the original point. Then the height of the tangent plane, the height of the tangent plane is approximately the height of the surface. Okay, so let's write this down. Well, the height of the surface, we said, well, that's f of a, b, right? That's going to be approximately equal to the height of our tangent plane. So let's think about how our tangent plane works. Um, that, sorry, <laughs> we want to do this at a nearby point, right? So we want to do this at a nearby point. So at the point, let's write it out precisely, a plus delta x, y plus delta y, sorry, b plus delta y. 
the actual height of the surface is just f of this. You actually plug into the function, you'll get the actual height of the surface. All right, this is going to be approximately equal to, as long as we're nearby, this is going to be approximately equal to the height of the tangent plane. The height of the tangent plane is going to be, we just plug into that linear function, right? So f of ab plus b at df by dx at ab times the x value. So that's a plus delta x minus a plus df by dy at ab times b minus b plus delta y minus b. All right, and you see in both of these what's going to happen. Well, a minus a, uh, b minus b. We're going to end up with the following formula, the f of a plus delta x comma b plus delta y is approximately equal to the height of the function f of a b plus df by dx times delta x plus df by dy times delta y. Okay, so based on this, we can see that this difference right here, this is the change in the tangent plane, okay? So this right here represents the, t the change in the tangent plane. So this is going to be the change from here to here. So that's going to be this num this whatever this is right here, right? So this actually gets a name. This is called dz. This is called the differential of the function. So that's going to be dz, and then the change in the actual height of the of the function itself of the surface itself. This height, which might look like this on this one, this is called delta z. This is the actual change in the surface in the surface's height, and the dz is going to be the change in the height of the tangent plane. Okay, so we've defined a couple of things here. We need to write them down now. So um, here we go. So the differential. This is what we just worked out, actually. We didn't know it, but the differential of f is given by... So the differential of f is given by dz equals... So just by this formula, right? So I didn't write out the of a, b in these spots, but everything here is a function of a and b, right? So this is going to be df by dx times dx plus partial df by dy times dy. So that's the differential of f. All right. Uh, the linear approximation. So this is just the, the tangent plane thought of as a function, right? The linear approximation of f at p, at the point p, is given by this function. So linear approximation at p of f. So LPF, this is one way to write it. This is a function of x and y. All right. And so this one is just given by the equation of the tangent line. So this is give, at p, at p, right? So f of a, b. So up here, I, I've written this kind of wrong. I mean, I guess it's okay. So let, we should give the coordinates for p. p is a, b, and then f of a, b. Right. So here's the function L of L P F uh, at X Y is F of A B. That's a constant. That's just the Z coordinate, right? Plus uh, D F by D Y evaluated at A B times X minus A. It's just the equation of the tangent line, right? This should be an X. D F by D X, and then this one is D F by D Y at A B of Y minus B or times y minus b. All right, so this is the equation of the tangent line treated like a function, okay? And so again, the main idea here, the main idea here is that near ab, the following is true, right? f of a plus, by the way, um, these independent changes in x and y, because x and y are independent variables, delta x and delta y are just the same as dx and dy. All right, so the other differentials here are dx is just equal to delta x and dy is just equal to delta y. These are just tiny changes, right? Okay, so um, then what we can write is near f, near a, b, uh, f, of a plus dx comma b plus dy, this is approximately equal to LPF 
of the same thing, right? Of a plus dx and then b plus dy. But based on what we plugged in up here, we already did this, right? Based on what we plugged in up here, this side is equal to f at ab plus that whole term, right? df by dx times dx plus df by dy times dy, and that's what we call dz, right? And so this is equal to f of ab plus dz. And so summarizing all of this, the whole idea here is that applying the function uh, f to a point near ab, so f of a plus dx comma b plus dy, this is approximately equal taking the value of f at ab and just adding this differential dz. And so this is the key. So all of this is, is under the umbrella of the linear approximation in our textbook, um, but the key tool that's running all of this, that's doing all of the work in the linear approximation is the differential, okay? This is the differential. And so all of these functions, dx, dy, dz, these are all kind of functions of x and y that we could say are centered in some sense at a, b. Because at a, b, they're all going to be equal to zero, right? When x is equal to a and y is equal to b, they're all just going to be equal to zero. And so if we were going to write this like this, we already know we've written a couple times uh, what this is, right? But dx is just going to be, in that case, x minus a. dy is just going to be y minus b if we want to treat these like functions, right? And then dz is, of course, given by that whole partial derivative formula. So dx f at a b constant times x minus a plus dy f at a b times y minus b. So these are all functions of x and y that are centered or kind of fixed at a b. And then this formula makes perfect sense from there, right? Okay, so um, let's do some examples here. It's a little bit theoretical nonsense the way that we've gone about that there. But before we do here, let's let's give a definition. So the following definition is in terms of delta z. So here's our definition. So let's first let delta z, let's define what delta z is. We talked about this. The delta z is the change in the height of the function, right? The actual surface. So it's f of a plus delta x comma b plus delta y minus f of a comma b. So this is delta z. Delta z is exactly this, right? In the limit, when we talk about the tangent plane, then it becomes dz. But this, uh, and for this definition, we're talking about delta z. All right? This definition is about the differentiability of our function of two variables. So if f is a function of x and y, all right, then we say f is differentiable. So then f is differentiable. at a point a, b, if and only if delta z can be expressed in the following way. So if and only if, if delta z can be expressed in the form, and we'll see that this is going to look pretty familiar. So delta z is going to be equal to df by dx at a, b times delta x plus df by dy at a, b times delta y. That would be the differential itself, right? So this would say that the delta x is equal to the differential, but that's not the definition of the differentiable here. So this is equal to, uh, sorry, we need to add on epsilon 1 delta x plus epsilon 2 delta y. And then we need to say, so this is going to be true in a neighborhood of the point, right? So this is going to be true uh, where epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 approach 0 as delta x and delta y approach 0, approach the point, right? 
So again, the changes delta x and delta y approaching zero means that the point is getting close to AB. The point xy is getting close to the point AB. And then this change in z in the surface itself should be equal to in the limit, in the limit it should be equal to the change in the differential. And so that's the idea. All right. And so, like I said before, in such cases, so in such cases meaning what we just outlined up here, then delta z approaches dz, which is equal to our differential. So just a slightly different point of view, but this gives us uh, a definition of differentiable as well in terms of these two epsilons, epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. Okay, so let's do an example now. This one is number 5. This one, I want us to consider the following function. Let's consider the function f of xy equals um, x squared plus 3xy minus y squared. And I want us to compute, so find delta z and dz. So delta z, just to highlight everything here, delta z is this. It's the actual change in the function value. And dz is this. It's the differential, right? The change in the tangent plane. Okay, um, so find both of these, and then we have to know a point, right? Because these are changing. So find both of these as uh, xy changes from this point 0.23 to this point 2.05, 2.96. All right, so why don't you guys take a moment and work out these two values and compare the two, and then come back and we'll do it together. Now that you've had a chance to work this out, let's work this out ourselves. So let's start with just the function. So we're going to need the function value, f of 2, 3. Um, so we just plug this into our function, right? So when x is 2 and y is 3, we get 2 squared plus 3 times 2 times 3 minus 3 squared. So this is 4 uh, plus 8, uh, sorry, plus, yeah, 18 minus 9, right? And so this is just going to be 13. Now this is the hardest one actually. We need to compute f of 2.05 comma 2.96. So this is going to be 2.05 quantity squared plus 3 times 2.05 times 2.96 minus 2.96 quantity squared. So I'm going to go to a calculator here and just type this in. And we get this one is 4.2025 plus, here we have 3 times 2.05 times 2.96. This is 18.204 minus 2.96 quantity squared. That's 8.7616. And so then we just have to add these up, right? And so this gives us 13.6449. And obviously then we just compute delta Z as the difference of these, right? So it's F of 2.05, 2.96 minus F of 2, 3. 
And so this is going to be 13.6449 minus 13, which is 0 0.6449. Okay, so that's delta Z. How about DZ? Well, remember, DZ is DF by DX times DX at the point, right? Plus DF by DY times DY. And so we just need to compute all this. The point we're going to use, we're changing from this one to the other one. So we're going to use the point 2, 3 as our AB. And we're going to have to compute our delta X and delta Y from this, right? So we can just look at this. But delta X is going to be um, the change. So it's going to be X minus A. Well, A is 2 and X is this. So 2.05 minus 2, so 0 0.05 or 1 over 20 if that helps us. And delta Y is going to be the same thing, right? Y minus B. This is 2.96 minus 3. So this one's negative 0 0.04. And this one's going to be, um, what, 1 negative 1 over 25. And so we can go from here now. So we need to compute these things, right? Remember, our function is this polynomial. So df by dx is just equal to the x derivative of this function. So it's 2x plus 3y minus 0, right? df by dy is 0 plus 3x, so we don't need to write plus, but 3x minus 2y, all right? We plug in our point. Our point is 2, 3 to each of these. And so this one's going to be 4 plus 9. So this one's 13. And this one's going to be, uh, what, 6 minus 6. This one's 0. Right? So th two, 3 times 2 minus 2 times 3. That's 0. So there's that. And so then our dz, this is going to be our x partial derivative, which is 13, times our dx, which is 20 right, uh, plus our y derivative, which happens to be 0, times our dy, which is negative 1 25th. So this whole thing just ends up being 13 over 20. And 13 over 20, if we type that into our calculator, I mean, you could approximate this, right? Oh, you don't have to approximate it. 13 uh, over 20 just multiply by 5, top and bottom, right? So it's going to be 0 0.65. 0 0.65. Okay, so dz, this is the change in the tangent plane. We get 0, so this is again dz, 0 0.65. That's the change in the tangent plane. The actual change in the surface, delta z, is 0 0.6449. So notice that it's not exactly the same, right? The tangent plane changes more in this case, it could be less in some cases, but changes more in this case than the surface itself, but it changes, uh, it's within 0 0.0001, right, or 0051. So it's within 0051 of the exact answer. And so depending on the application, if that's enough, if that's close enough, then it's much easier to use the differential, as you can see just by computing this. So we could have done this all on paper by hand for the differential for the, I mean, we could have, I guess, if we had spent more time, but it would have been a little harder with the actual d delta Z, the change in the surface itself. So there's the difference, uh, an example of showing the difference of the differential and the actual change, delta Z. Um, we can actually continue to expand this, right? But all of this can be done in more than one variable, and more than two variables, I should say. So this can all be extended to apply to more than two variables. So let's end this lecture with an example of a function of three variables. So here's a function. T is a function now of u, v, and w. T is going to be equal to v over 1 plus u times v times w. All right, so t here is a function of u, v, and w. And what I would like to do is use differentials in a linear approximation, but 
but use differentials to approximate. So differentials are always linear approximations. But to approximate the value of t of negative 0 0.9, positive 1.1, and a negative 1.05. All right, so take a minute to try to approximate this value using differentials, and then come back and we'll finish off this lecture together. All right, let's see how you did on this one. So for this one, our t of negative 0.9, 1.1, negative 1.05, this is going to be approximately equal to, the first thing we have to do is decide what point we should use as kind of our base point. And so looking at these numbers, this is close to negative 1, this is close to 1, this is close to negative 1. So we're going to try to do negative 1, 1, negative 1 as our base point. And then we need to add in our differential, right? So then we're going to do plus dt. Um, but we're going to have to compute this. A lot goes into this computation, right? The first thing we can do, though, is just compute t of negative 1, 1, negative 1. So this is equal to v is 1. The rest of them are negative 1, right? So 1 plus negative 1 times 1 times negative 1. So this is 1 half, right? 1 over 1 plus 1. That's a half. So our answer is going to be then a half plus our differential in this way, in this case, right? So there's our differential. So what's our dt going to be? Well, it's going to be, it's got three variables now, right? So we need one of these for each. So dt by du times du plus dt by dv times dv plus dt by dw times dw. And again, same deal here, right? So du is going to be x minus the x value, so x minus negative 1, uh, x, u, right, u minus negative 1, dv is going to be v minus the v value, so v minus 1, and dw is going to be w minus this value, negative 1, and of course that's our dt, right, so we can compute all these right now because we know these values. So for us this one's going to be negative 0 0.9 minus a negative 1, so this is going to be uh, positive 0 0.1 actually, or one tenth if it if it becomes useful to use fractions. V minus 1, well this is going to be 1.1 minus 1, which is also 0 0.1 or one tenth. And then W minus, so this last one is the, oh sorry, the W is in this case negative 1.05 uh, minus a negative 1, so this is positive 0 0.05, which is 1 20th, right? Sorry, this is negative, negative, negative 1.05 plus 1, negative 1 20th. Okay, now we need to compute our derivatives. So these are all the differentials that we need, uh, other than dt itself, right? But they're the building block differentials. Now we need to compute our partial derivatives. So dt by du... Well, this is going to be a chain rule, right? So something over something with a u. So when we take the derivative, it's going to be negative this over the bottom squared times the derivative with respect to u. So it's going to be negative v squared w over 1 plus u vw squared. All right, dt by dv. Actually, dt by dw is going to be very similar to this, right? But... Um, Let's go in order. So dt by <coughs> dv has to be a quotient rule. So it's going to be low, d high, minus high. d low is with respect to v, right? Derivative of the bottom with respect to v. So that's going to be uw. And then the bottom of all this is just going to be uh, the bottom squared. And then as you can see here, those are going to cancel. So this is just going to end up being 1 over 1 plus u v w quantity squared. And then dt by dw, this is going to be chain rule. All right, by dw it's going to be the same as this, except it's going to put on top a minus u, uh, it's going to be a minus u v squared. All right, and then a 1 plus u v w quantity squared. So there's our derivatives, and now we need to plug in our base point to each of these, right? 
So for our base point, let's write down here. dt by du at the point, negative 1, 1, negative 1. Well, what's it going to be? v is the positive 1, the other ones are negative ones, right? So this is going to be negative 1 squared times negative 1 over 1 plus, with this we already worked out, right? So this is a 1 squared. So altogether, this is going to be negative, negative, so positive 1 fourth, okay? And then obviously the same thing is going to happen with dt by dw. So dt by dv is going to be just 1 over 4. And then dt by dw is going to be, again, negative, negative, cancel, squared, squared. So this is also 1 over 4. So all of these derivatives are one-fourth here. That is not common, right? That's just coincidence. And then we just have to plug in. So the final thing to do is write down our dt. So we've got a formula for our dt here, right? This one-fourth can actually factor out of everything if we want it to. And because of that, let's write each of these. Let's uh, write these as 2 over 10. So we'll write this as 1 fourth times 2 tenths plus 1 fourth times 2 tenths uh, plus 1 fourth times negative 1 twentieth, not 2 tenths, 2 twentieths. I was trying to make it easier, messed it up. And so now when we add these up, it's 4 minus 1, so this is uh, 3 eightieths, right? So that's our dt, and so this means t of our number, which is so t of negative 0 0.9, 1.1, negative 1.05, this is approximately equal to 1 half plus 3 eightieths, right? Or another way to write this is 43 over 80. So there's our differentials used to compute the linear approximation of this function at this point, right, using the base point of, of negative 1, 1, negative 1 to approximate the value of this one without actually having to plug in and compute this one on our own. Okay, so uh, that's it for this lecture. I'll see you guys in the next one.